Wine, cheese and bread are three of the most ancient food and there is a reason why they are still so popular nowadays. They are fascinating, aren't they? I'm so in love with this food that I could just live on that. And chocolate, of course. In this first episode, we are going to talk a little bit about the archaeology of wine. Apparently, this beverage has been appreciated by men for longer than you think. At least, than I thought. This beverage has been discovered or invented in more than one different location. After all, the basic principle of obtaining it is fermentation, which can occur spontaneously from the bacteria present in the fruit itself. So let's go 8,000 years back, towards the end of the Stone Age, to Georgia, a country at the intersection of Europe and Asia, in the Caucasus area, where the oldest trace of wine that are known until now were found in 2017. Scientists found some samples of earth and ceramic with tartaric acid, which is an evidence that the inhabitants of this region were dedicated to making white wine. They believe that these are the first signs of beach culture, an organized planting made by men. Some of these vessels and containers could storage up to 300 liters, which impressed even the experts who thought there was no technology for that, uh, as the first presses and equipment were found in Armenia and they are from 4000 BC. Beyond the historical relevance, the vines from the Georgian region gave rise to different vi varieties of grapes used for wine production until now. Before this, the oldest known evidence was 7,000 years old and had been found in Iran, not very far from Georgia. Men are so passionate about wine that it is present in the oldest and most important literary work of mankind from different cultures and languages, such as Gilgamesh, uh, which is a uh, compiled of poems and legends uh, from Sumeria, Talmud, the holy book of Jewish people, the epic narratives of Homer like Iliad and Odyssey, and of course the Bible. Ancient people like Greeks and Egyptians use amphorae uh, to storing and transporting wine uh, for many many years until almost the Middle Ages, when they started to be replaced by barrels by the Celts to facilitate the commercialization of wine through Italy uh, at the end of the Roman Empire. Until today, the structure of the barrels are very similar to the ones that were used at that time. Speaking of Roman Empire, we cannot forget its relevance to the dissemination of wine during its golden expansion times. Julius Caesar, for example, had an important participation in the development of the Burgundy uh, vineyards, which is a region uh, that produced many of the most renowned and expensive wines of the world until today. Bordeaux, on the other hand, must have reached its majesty uh, during the times of English rule, when it started to supply wine to the British court and makes it gain notoriety in England. So, it's possible to understand why Italian and French wines are so recognized. There are years and years of history and a lot of dedication to this beverage and it led to its improvement over time. They played an important role in the upgrade of beach culture and winemaking and develop meaningful concepts such as terroir. Terroir is a French word that represents the most intimate relationship between a small particular geographic region and the vineyard. Its soil, altitude and climate guarantee unique characteristics of quality and identity to the grape that are exclusive of this place. Wow, so much information in such a short time. So let's enjoy a very good glass of wine and relax a little. Mm -hmm. 
Since I mentioned Burgundy, which is one of my favorite wine producing regions, I'll talk about a trilogy from Domaine Berto Gerbet. I had three different wines from the same year, 2015. The first one was Bourgogne Hot Côte Nuit. The second one was Bourgogne Le Piel. And third one was uh, Fixant uh, Le Cré. These are very elegant and gentle wines, like all good Bourguignon Pinot Noir should be. This grape guarantees a very delicate body and structure and high acidity. So I say this is the most feminine of all grapes and it generally pleases women, uh, especially those ones who are beginning to explore the pleasures of wine. I found all three similar to each other with a predominance of earth, mushroom and slightly animal notes. After the bottle brief for a while, I could also feel a delicate bouquet of black peppers such as Syria and Jamaica, uh, some herbs like thyme and oregano, and a slightly touch of smoke, especially in the third one. The first one has clearly passed its peak and then I saw that the recommendation of the producer was to drink it by 2018 uh, as it is 2020 so uh, it's probably why I didn't taste the best of it. It is the least full-bodied uh, structure and complex of the three. Fixan was the third and the last and I think the best of the series. Uh, tasting better, being slightly more structured and complex and full body than the others. And what about you? Have you ever tried a Burgundy wine? Do you appreciate it? Leave your comments here and let me know your opinion. Hope you enjoyed the first episode and the first tasting and I'm looking forward to seeing you the next time. It doesn't matter what's been said and done It's time to start from scratch Let go of the past But you don't seem to care Wine lips are missing you